Hey guys, welcome back to Orms TV. Today we have something quite special for you. Only one in the country, this is the brand new Canon XF705 in our hands and we are going to do a full review for you today. You've got me over here and you've got Jean, our broadcast sales manager. Let's go have a look. So we've got the brand new XF705 right here. We are sitting inside the lovely Crown restaurant and wine bar at Mirandol Wine Estate. We came out here to shoot one of our other colleagues doing some uh, mountain bike runs and um, testing this little bad boy out. So Jean, you want to take us through the basic specs of this unit? Cool. So the all-new Canon uh, XF705 is the first broadcast camera in the world to shoot this amazing uh, H.265 HEVC codec. Mm. Um, it's super impressive. Um, 4K. 60p, uh, impressive 15 times optical zoom and a 30 times digital zoom. Um, it boasts a, a wide dynamic range and high dynamic range shooting capability. Mm. Um, it has also HD at 120 frames for those that want to do some slow mo, um, and an all round impressive ergonomic built camera. Yeah. And this also runs a one inch sensor, right? Definitely. A nice big one inch sensor, a nice for low light capability. Um, it's not a broadcast standard to shoot with a one inch sensor, mm, so this mm. is also new on their platform. Um, super impressive, high resolution, um, very rich colors coming out of this Canon broadcast camera. So Jean, you mentioned that this unit shoots in this all new format that it's using for the 4K recording. Do you want to just elaborate on that and explain to us what exactly that means? Okay, great. So H.265, the HEVC codec, mm. is an amazing new codec for broadcast cameras. This allows this camera to shoot 4K UHD 50 and 60p mm. onto an SD memory card. Jeez. Okay, mm. so a format that everybody can use, everybody knows, you probably already have a ton of SD cards. And what, yeah. is your file size just much, much smaller? Yeah, so it shoots onto an SD card. It's mm. an H265. Um, so the file sizes are, are nice and small. It's 160 megabits per second. You can get 50 minutes of recording time on a 64 gig card. Jeez. Um, just the... Something you need to remember is that H.265 is a new codec to the broadcast industry. Okay. So you just got to make sure that your uh, non-linear editing suite um, can handle the new codec. Okay. So at, at this moment, as we're recording this, is there any editing suites that do handle that codec? As far as I'm aware, uh, Blackmagic's uh, DaVinci Resolve is fully compatible. Okay. And then obviously Adobe Premiere and um, Final Cut Pro and that kind of thing will follow suit. They will follow suit shortly, yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So you say that this shoots um, in this new fantastic format, but does yeah. it still allow you to shoot in more traditional formats? Yeah. MP4 format uh, will also be available on the memory cards. Uh, the SD memory cards. Okay. Uh, for those guys wanting more of a compressed video, um, uploading to social media or to any file formats. Okay, cool. And then um, in addition to that, do you get you know your your high dynamic range? Yeah. So this camera is also mm. not capable of shooting high dynamic range and wide dynamic range um, in a in a low light area. Just to show you detail level in the highlights and in the low lights. Okay. Um, it's also capable of shooting Canon C Log three. Okay. Which is normally traditionally only been available with for Sony cameras mm. like C two hundred, C three hundred, and C one hundred. But this is pretty impressive. It's a broadcast camera with almost a Cine kind of operation to it. Okay, excellent. Um, so when you look at this unit itself, I mean, I'm seeing right in the front here, red ring on the lens. Yeah, so it's a yeah. Canon L glass. Okay. So it's the good quality that you can expect from the EF glasses out of the, the, the DSLR range. Um, professional 15 times optical lens. Uh, naturally, it's a broadcast lens, full mm. professional broadcast lens, because mm. it's got an actual uh, focus ring, a zoom ring, and an aperture ring. Okay, so all three rings in there, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and then these rings, I assume you can program them to do whatever you want and function in the way that you want them to work? No, no, so the front one will always be your focus. Uh, okay, okay. Your secondary ring is going to be your zoom. Okay. And then your, your small little ring at the back, which is going to be your aperture control. Ah, oh, fair enough. Uh, okay. She does have a zoom rocker, which traditionally is a broadcast camera. Yeah. Um, as a zoom rocker that is pressure sensitive. Uh, has a smaller zoom rocker on the top, which is not pressure sensitive for those nose, nice slow, wide and... and and zooming okay. shots. On the main zoom rocker, can you set the sensitivity on that? I do believe you can go into the menu. Yes, you can go and set the sensitivity of that um, for judicial video shoots where you have to ramp your shots in and out. Okay, beautiful. Um, then since we are talking about the lens, this has Canon's very, very impressive dual pixel autofocus, which has become just the standard for autofocus. Yes, yeah. Um, also known as DAF, uh, Canon's Cine range, the, the C100 Mark II, mm. Uh, it came out with DAF and has incredible fast focusing um, and also uh, facial recognition and face tracking. Mm. That's built into this broadcast camera now. 
Um, we shot some shots earlier today with the, the cyclist and I was really impressed in how I kept the focus from a far distance right through to the wide end. Yeah, that, that footage looks absolutely phenomenal. Okay, so moving on from the lens, let's talk about this top console over here. And first things first, this LCD screen. Yeah, the LCD screen, nice big. It's a touch screen, so you can manipulate the menu settings with a touch screen. Mm -hmm. Nice and big. Um, the brightness is good enough to shoot in the sunlight. Uh, it is this amazing feature where you can actually flip the LCD back into its holding position and then out the other side. Okay. So if you wanted a right-handed LCD screen, no yeah. problem. It also has a button on the bottom side that you can actually flip and mirror the actual picture on the LCD screen. Okay. So oh. that's really impressive. I'm super impressed with that. Um, nice high contrast. Um, it's fully manipulable in the menu. You can go set the contrast, the color, and mm -hmm. the brightness uh, in the menu. Okay, so when we were shooting outside earlier, how did you find that LCD screen? Um, LCD screen was nice. Um, the shiny glossiness of it makes it kind of difficult to see in, in bright sunlight. Okay. Um, a little ray shade that you can make at home um, would be a brilliant way of actually seeing when you're shooting out in bright sunlight. Okay, but I mean, if you are shooting outside, you can also use the viewfinder, of course. Yeah, I actually was forced to use the viewfinder in one or two of the shots, mm -hmm. uh, just because it was so bright out there on the, on the bicycle track. Okay. Um, and the rest of this console at the top, what have we got here? So, traditionally, it's got a nice uh, shoe over here to allow you to mount radio mics, the mm -hmm. receiver, um, an onboard LED light if you so wish. Mm -hmm. It's got a stereo built-in mic, so if you don't have an XLR mic plugged into the camera, then you can use the onboard mic. Mm -hmm. um, it has obviously your, your media playback, your start, stop, and, and skip forward and skip backwards. It has a nice little, little joystick toggle, okay. a four-directional button, uh, which is to select your menu mm -hmm. um, and, and, and change the menu manipulation. Um, obviously pushing then down selects the menu. You've got another record button okay. just in case you're doing low shots yeah, yeah. and you've got your thumb here and you want to hit start stop. Um, and then it's got a very small little zoom rocker which is a constant slow zoom okay. that you can set with a button over here for a nice low or fast zoom ratio. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, so then I see also on the console over here, you've got an XLR port. Yes, correct. Yeah. So okay. a broadcast camera traditionally has your two XLRs, yeah. your, your channel yeah. one and channel two. Um, I was quite perturbed when I saw there's only one XLR here. Mm. Um, and when I played with the camera slightly more, I saw there was a second XLR further to the back of the camera. Okay. And I thought to myself, why would they do that? And then you work it out. If you've got an XLR camera mic mounted on the front of here, that XLR is brilliant. Yes. Um, and if you've got an LCD screen mounted over here or an onboard LED light mounted over here, mm. where do you put your radio mic? Yeah, true. So they've actually manufactured an actual port at the back here where you can actually mount the radio mic. And then you've got your second XLR over here with the XLR settings to put that radio mic receiver into. Oh, excellent. Okay. Brilliant That's, design. Yeah, that is actually quite unique because generally speaking, you've got your two XLRs at the front. Correct. Normally, um, yeah. yeah, or on some of your cine cameras, two at the back. Yes. Okay. Um, so since we are at the back of the unit here, what else have we got? Uh, we've got Genlock, uh, traditional BNC Genlock over here. Yeah. Um, we've got a HDSDI output. Traditionally with a Canon 705 and then a 405 and the Canon XF 105, mm, the mm. 5 meant that it had HDSDI. Yes. With this range, Canon have only launched an XF 705. There unfortunately is no 700. Okay. The reason for that is because of the 12G HDSDI outputs. Um, you can't get that via HDMI. So okay. it is kind of pointless to, to manufacture a camera that only has HDMI. Uh, you've got HDMI output, of course, on this unit. Um, you've also got a, a headphones out. Um, you've got an Ethernet for, for live streaming, if you so wish. Mm -hmm. um, and then a, a network connection. So if you want to use a remote, uh, also known as a paint box in the industry, if you want to manipulate the camera, okay. you can connect that as well. Okay, and then also this unit takes a standard Canon uh, BP A series batteries. Correct, yeah. They obviously, the additional BP A30 and the mm -hmm. A60. It's the same batteries used on the C300 and the C200. Okay. Stepped it up with those 12 volt big batteries. Okay, fantastic. And then if we walk around to the other side, um, uh, what have we got over here? We've got our two SD card slots. Yes, two SD card slots um, with a different array of ways of shooting on them. Mm. Um, what I like about this, this camera from, from Canon is that it has a lot of buttons on the outside. Yeah. A lot of buttons on the outside of the camera traditionally means there's less having to sift through a menu to manipulate that setting that you want to manipulate. Mm. Um, Autofocus um, and aperture control, uh, shutter speed, and 
amazingly NDs. This camera's got built-in NDs, and okay. it's not a digital ND, it's an actual mechanical ND. So there's actual glass shifting in front of the actual receptor. Okay, fair enough. So these buttons, I assume some of them can be manipulated in the menu to have com uh, custom functions? Yeah, function buttons are laid out all over the camera. Okay. My favorite one is obviously number seven, yeah. meaning there's seven buttons. Um, it's right here at the top. Okay. Um, and you can set an array of settings on those uh, customized about buttons. This one over here has an artificial punch in where it actually zooms in artificially to actually check if you're in focus. Okay, and then you hit enough. the button again and then it goes out again. Okay, excellent. Okay, Jean, so after shooting with this camera for most of the day now out on the mountain biking trails, in terms of ergonomics, fit and finish, what do you like, what don't you like? Um, so right off the bat, I had a couple of times where I had to use the viewfinder at the back over here. Mm -hmm. um, nice and bright. Um, it's got a built-in diopter, so it can adjust for your eye. Um, that was very, very useful in the, in the bright sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, after playing around with the camera, it's, I kept on leaving these, these scratch marks on the camera. The, the finish on it is a very rough, mm. sandpapery finish. Yeah. Um, I don't know why they didn't make it smooth. Um, it's not the end of the world, but um, I'm very uh, pedantic when it comes to cameras. Mm. Um, I would have liked to have had the hand grip also rotatable, yeah. Um, but I believe Canon chose against that because of the weight distribution of the camera. It would be a little bit uncomfortable on the wrist. Um, the, the lens hood was a nice size and has a, a closing flap over there on the front mm -hmm. so that you can close it in, in case there's sandy conditions. It was dusty on the, on the, true, on true. the bike track, so I closed that when we weren't shooting. Okay. Um, the hand grip at the top, it's nice distribution, nice and big. I can fit my hand nice and comfortable. My fingers can access the buttons, the record button, the zoom button, and the zoom rocker over here very comfortably. Um, it's an additional video broadcast camera. Mm. When shooting on a tripod, I additionally want to have my right hand on the pan handle. Yeah. How do you reach the zoom rocker? Of course. Plain and simple. You pop it through the actual hand grip. Nice big space over here so I can fit my hand through and I can manipulate a zoom rocker like you would normally do with a traditional broadcast camera. Okay, fair enough. And then, um, I mean, since we have a traditional broadcast camera, I assume shoulder mounting is an option? Yes, traditionally you can, you can obviously put this onto a shoulder rig. Um, mm. It does have this amazing little plastic foot feature over, over yeah. here, which helps if you're wanting a little bit of support. So obviously you're traditionally a hand in the, the hand grip, a hand on the, on the lens for manipulating mm -hmm. of the lens. and then. It has this nice plastic bit of here to actually help you that you can push into, into your shoulder just to, to, to stabilize it. And we all know the more points you make contact with your body, of the course. more stable your shot's going to be. Indeed. And the distance to the actual LCD from my face is perfect. So I can actually still focus on what's, what is critical on the actual LCD. Okay, beautiful. Really, really impressive. Okay, so now that we've run over all the features here, um, the good and the bad, who is this camera aimed at? Canon XF705 is traditionally a broadcast camera. Mm. So uh, ENG cameramen, um, news gathering, uh, documentary filmmaking, corporates, stage performance. Um, it's got a 15 times optical zoom, so it's brilliant for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much an all-round camera, um, and it's going to be a flagship in, in Canon's 4K realm broadcast cameras, okay. without a doubt. Okay, so, and I assume because of uh, the 12G output in that, also suitable for live productions? Definitely. Mm. Live production, multicam, this camera is definitely going to make its footprint into the broadcast industry. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, guys, that is about a wrap for our review. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Jean, thank you very much for joining us. Always great to see you. Yeah, always good to have you on, the, on Orms TV. And guys, as always, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We love hearing from you guys. Thank you very much.